is the Glass Cannon Network. to issue a correction from last week's episode i in our all of our excitement that it might be the harlem globetrotters that had crash landed on this planet several thousand years in the future um (laughs) i i recalling a moment from my childhood mentioned that my middle school faculty and staff had played against the harlem globetrotters in a fundraising exhibition match to which skid just immediately questioned (laughs) <laughs> my entire childhood and I backed off. I have since texted my mother and it was the Harlem Wizards, which as far as I understand it, are a knockoff of the Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> plant brand. So you can imagine my confusion. But that's not Once what I Once again, wrote. your mom sides with me. <laughs> Once again, my mom sides with, sides with Skid, yes. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about is, uh, I don't, I want to, I don't want to overstate this, but, uh, Let's just say Sydney's betrayal. Sydney had the exact same experience that I did. <laughs> and yet when I was, when my in- entire childhood was called into question by Skid and my brain was spiraling outward, Sydney did not want to step in to, off- to offer just a few tidbits that she too had had the exact same experience. <laughs> Flailing, I will say drowning. The drowning. She stands there with a life preserver in her hands and chooses to do nothing. <laughs> and I, I tear it to shreds. Um, I will say, I did say at the time, very quietly, I was like, oh yeah, I think I saw the Harlem Gold gold trotters too. I saw them. <laughs> and nobody cared. <laughs> and Skid, Skid was already like, yeah, sure, Sydney, you saw the Harlem Globetrotters. Great. You and Matthew both, they came to your school. I said it quietly because in my mind, Matthew, I had a slight feeling where I was like, that can't be right. Like, I think Skid I, is right. That I, that can't be right. I, I just took it as, like, I, I, I trust Sydney. <laughs> I know we're better than you do, though. That's I hold thing. a really strong power, Seth. I have to be careful how I wield it because I, I could have been more confident about it. But then we discovered... Matthew and I, I'm going to say we were right. We were close enough that our childhood brains can't. You're, you're not right. We you're saw, not right. <laughs> we, <laughs> we both had the Harlem Wizards come to our schools, which Matthew grew up in Jersey and I grew up in New York. And this must have been a common occurrence like in the 2000s. They come, they play the teachers, they do like a faculty game, and then they, you know, make fun of everybody and like do all these trick shots. And there's like a halftime show. It's just like the Globe Trotter, Globe Trotters. It's just like them. So I basically uh, saw the Harlem Globe Trotters. Is what I'm saying. No. I think we could have got. I think we could have just <laughs> achieved a state of accuracy that we did not, if only we had been more collaborative. I, I, I see it as the is Pepsi okay version of can the Globetrotters play at my school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, we don't have Globetrotters. Are we the have Wizards the okay? Harlem Wizards at home. We don't need the Harlem <laughs> Globetrotters. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the Globetrotters off Wish. Okay, heck. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> have any of you ever seen the actual Globetrotters? No. no now, now no. no. I thought I had. Well, I went through my whole life thinking I'd already done that. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't bother. No. We should see, should we go? I did see I did see the Harlem Globetrotters. And in January 1990, I went mm-hmm. with my high school girlfriend. It was the day of the Broncos Browns AFC Championship game, uh the third out of the three times that they played each other and the Broncos cleaned their clocks, destroyed them in this game. And we go to the, and I was just like, one of the best days of my life, hanging out with my 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 high school girlfriend. We go to McNichols Arena. We go to the Globetrotters game. And we ended up sitting right behind the Broncos' backup quarterback, Gary Kubiak, who went on to coach the team to a Super Bowl 51. Oh, wow. Did you say anything to him sitting in front of you or just sat there? I said, I think that's Gary Kubiak. And he kind of <laughs> turned and looked at me like, why don't you leave me alone because I'm here with my son. And then that was the last thing I did. 
I see we we might have tapped a, a deep vein of. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, it's kind of I traumatic want- though if you think about it. Though it's traumatic because it's like imagine if like you're a little kid and you meet like you, you meet Michael Jackson or somebody and you're really excited and then you look at the picture like 25 years later and it's like a Vegas strip impersonator. But all these years <laughs> you thought it was really. Michael Jackson. I, I thought you said a Vegas stripper, and it was like that's no. even better. <laughs> that's what I thought. I, I swear, I thought it was, was Michael well. Jackson. It was just some stripper in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> what did my dad tell me? Why would he? Why would he tell why would me? Would he <laughs> what a weird <laughs> weekend that must have been. <laughs> and why do I have so many pictures? <laughs> I, spent, I spent years saying Michael Jackson gave me a lap dance, but evidently oh I was God. wrong. <laughs> Alicia, that is my favorite <laughs> brand of tweet. Of people who were like, right. why yeah. did I think this was, you know, so and so? And they have this photo from when they were, you know, in middle school and they're like at a restaurant, like taking a picture with someone. <laughs> and it's, it's some random person it who likes to blog this so, pose. And it's, it they is look not like Michael Jackson. It is not <laughs> Orlando Bloom. Like, yeah. it's none of these celebrities. That's a very it's specific like Matthew like got Jenny mistaken Depp. for it's Nick Kroll when we were out in LA. Oh my God. Oh, Matthew. Yeah. Matthew, <laughs> uh, AKA Michael close and dear friend Nick Kroll, Matthew Capricasa. Can you I, speak on that? Story? Yeah. So what's it like what's it like to be a, a huge comedian celebrity? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, it was uh we were we were so we were in LA for a show and the night before we went to see Jared. We, we went, went to go see, see oh, yeah. Jared do stand up oh. at yeah. the Dynasty Typewriter, which is a very, very cool venue. And uh, it was, he was part of a, a slate, and Jared was on it. Uh, uh, it was a bunch of people, and but one of the others was Nick Kroll. And so we got there early ish not that early but when we got there the doors weren't open so there was it was there was no one there and we got i got out of the 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 lift which i think sydney you booked and you booked us like a black suv so it looked like we were being like supporting like the presidential <laughs> motorcade or something we needed a big car and they said like an escalade so we do get out looking like celebrities i guess yeah we look important ah. and i was wearing a mask like i'm wearing a mask and i get out of the car and this guy just comes out of nowhere and just runs up to me and is like are you nick Kroll? Yeah, <laughs> it's like Nick, and Nick? I was like, "What? No, sorry." <laughs> and he was like, yes, oh, I am. Okay. Well, I think he also had the moment of like celebrity telling me that they're not who they say they are. Like, oh, oh yeah, you're like- not. He was just kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> they didn't Wink. believe you. <laughs> he, yeah. Well, the, but the That's other awesome. the the other part of the story is that we then went to like there was no one there and there was one, so we went to get a drink at this. At this bar that was like in somebody's bizarre, house. It was it's a bizarre bar. Weird bar. Sydney Sin- Sin- found bar. it online. Apparently, it was supposed <laughs> to be <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I it was. It was Why a nice am I getting iced in this story? You're just Sydney's <laughs> <Sydney. laughs> <Sydney. laughs> getting buried in this story. <laughs> Sorry, Sydney. <laughs> uh, other people were there. Uh, <laughs> 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 anyway, we come back and we we lingered too long at the the house bar. And uh, now there was a huge line out in front of the, the venue. So we get on the line and I turned to, I turned to the others and I said, don't they know who I am? <laughs> but I was, I'm, I'm not, I'm not Nick Kroll. No. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up. Do you, do any of you get mistaken for celebrities? I've never gotten Nick Kroll before. At, at my first um, convention after uh, my first book came out and I was a guest author, it was my first one and I've got like, Imposter syndrome, like through the roof. <laughs> uh, somebody, I was, yes, yeah, this is also 2014, and I had very long blonde hair. Uh, somebody ran up, it's like, oh my God, you're here. And it's like, oh, you know, like, hi. It's just like, oh, I thought you were Scott Lynch and, and walked away. <laughs> uh, oh. So that's, that's the closest I had. So my imposter syndrome just came crashing down. And oh, that's terrible. And it just melts into the floor. <laughs> yeah, it just occurred to me, I asked that question, and Seth and Elisa, you kind of are celebrities. You are celebrities. Yeah. Like, you yeah. get mistaken no. for yourselves? Well, also, Elisa <laughs> oh. dresses up as, like, crazy different things, too. So, yeah. it's like... Yeah. It, well, it's, I have a few, like, so in, in life, I've always gotten mistaken for Lisa Bonet. For some reason, just, like, my whole life, I've gotten mistaken for Lisa Bonet. It's just a thing. <laughs> But two funny stories. I was at Gen, at Gen Con, um, E3, like, I don't know, eight years ago. And I had little, I, I used to dress up when I go to conventions like that, but not, I'm not costume. I'm talking about like a cute little skirt and like a little like half shirt. Cause I don't know who I thought I was trying to impress. 
but I used to walk around. <laughs> and like, there was a rumor going, a rumor started traveling through E3 that Rihanna was at E3. <laughs> and and I was like, holy crap, where? Where is she? <laughs> I had a friend with me. He was carrying her clipboard with her everywhere because I think she was taking notes. It turned out people thought that I was Rihanna and that was like my assistant running around after me because she was really little and had these oh. really tall heels on. But I'm looking for Rihanna too. We're all looking for her. <laughs> oh We're all out here just looking for Rihanna. Rihanna. <laughs> Where is she? She's <laughs> trending on Twitter and she's sitting on a beach somewhere going, evidently I'm at some thing? Comic book thing? Oh, this is weird. It would be a kind of a coup if Rihanna showed up at E3, I think. That would be, that would be insane. Were freaking out. Yes, and I was yes. like, where, where is she? And the <laughs> other one was, I when I went to the Avatar uh, premiere, I dressed up like full Avatar. Like I got the, I did my face paint, I had costume, everything like that. And people thought like for a minute, they're like, oh, you know, we thought like you were Zoe Saldana. Oh, and I was yeah. like, why would she <laughs> yeah, Why would she come in full costume? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what movie stars do. They wear their <laughs> costumes from the film <laughs> to oh, the oh premiere. My God. <laughs> I, was, I was in the bathroom. She was like, yeah, we thought, you know, and I was like, yeah, no, she has the, the gown on. on the <laughs> yeah, she's wearing a dress. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. She's she's not a nerd. She just plays one in the movie. So I, <laughs> I think she actually is a nerd, though. I think she is like kind of a nerd. I mean, she did read she? Avatar yeah. and Star Trek. Eventually, some of it must have rubbed off. But I not. think she like grew up. I think she grew up as like a nerd. I think I remember oh. reading that. I think I think she, maybe she was just like a big Trek fan or something growing up. But I thought I think she was like nerd. She has nerdish. I like that something. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. My secret favorite Zoe Saldana performance is Center Stage. And oh, me that's too. a good that's a very good movie that is a very good movie i love it it's like a, a guilty pleasure sort of movie like the oh. acting is questionable but you love it it's such a guilty <laughs> yes. pleasure i have no guilt yeah. about it whatsoever yeah. it's <laughs> juilliard in that right is that that's juilliard i uh, know it's supposed to be abt oh, which they call okay. abc yeah yeah it's such a good movie it's a dance um, movie so well speaking of uh famed new york ballet academies last week the survivors of the wreck oh of the God. warbler. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to go postmodern on all my segments oh, now. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, okay. Now I understand. Now. Yeah. Now I like Carry it. On. Uh, oh yeah. God. So the survivors of the wreck of the warbler, after spending eight years as castaways on this planet in the Great Rift that, as far as any of you know, does not appear on any star chart, witnessed not one but two ships crash land nearby their settlement up in a valley up in the mountains. Uh, and they reunited with Captain Willadine Faye Mo Moxley after her years of self uh, They reunited with Captain Willadine Faye Moxley after years of self isolation, uh, which you know they had to take a minute to talk through. Uh, but eventually, Pug, Arthur, and Swan, and Captain Moxley set out to work through their issues and investigate the crash sites. Maybe find survivors, maybe at least supplies. Who knows? But then Arthur used his psionic powers to detect the presence of five sentient life forms, though he felt two of them slipping away. So they set out from their idyllic valley and they came to the waterfall to the south, which, and as it turns out, sometime in the past six years, Willadine had actually ventured uh, to, out to this waterfall and discovered a pathway down that took them, you know, switch back and down to the ground, but it had been blocked uh, by a, by a cave -in. Uh, and together they dislodged the rubble and made their way to the forest below. And they bushwhacked their way toward the first crash site, that of the ship that had managed maybe a softer landing. Uh, but about after two hours or so, Arthur sensed they were being followed. So they each tried to hide, but their pursuer just soon opened fire, just blasting at them with some sort of laser, laser weapon. Uh, and they were pinned down, couldn't spot him, couldn't find him. Pug, I think, managed a, a, a glimmer of some like gleaming white armor, maybe a helmet, um, but they they couldn't get a clear enough clear enough view to get a shot off, and it looked dire. Willadine took a shot right to the chest, and then three humans kind of stepped out of the tree line behind them and opened fire and saved them. And that is where we will pick up today. So you turn, I'll describe these humans for you. Because uh, now I think we, I'll, I'll I'll say that we, eventually, like you, you all wait, kind of in that pinned down state, and eventually you don't. No one fires at you again, and you you safely assume that the fire has scared off, the weapons fire has scared off your attacker. Um, 
but the three humans. So the first is, a, is the woman who spoke to you. Uh, she's in her late 30s or 40s. She's cool looking. She's got jet black hair that's kind of swept back in a kind of pompadour and the left side of her head is tightly shorn. And you can see the trailing edge of a tattoo peeking out from beneath her right sleeve. She's wearing a leather jacket and calf length boots and what looks like reef like armor underneath the jacket. And she's got a shotgun that she's now training on you. She's like, maybe we can just talk about this without any of these weapons pointed at us. And uh, you also see a human man in his 40s with a neatly groomed mustache and a tightly cropped haircut. Uh, Willardine, you probably immediately recognize that style as what was popular in the Imperial Navy. He, you know, he's standing there, uh, he has, he's carrying himself very tall, stiff back, even though he's wearing this grease stained coverall. But he, you can tell he takes great pride in his appearance and he's got a laser carbine pointed at you. And then next to him, wearing a long waistcoat and tight black pants and what looks like a kind of embroidered leather boots. Uh, you, 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 you might recognize them as the ancient Terran style known as cowboy boots. <laughs> uh, he's he's uh, leaning up against a tree because you can see his, his left leg has been kind of fitted into a crude splint. Uh, you don't, it looks like his leg got partially crushed or hit or something, uh, but he's got two weapons, a laser pistol in one hand and a revolver in the other. He goes, well, look at here, Captain, we got us a party. <laughs> and the captain says, your weapons. Down, perhaps? Uh, d but they have their weapons trained on us. Yeah. I think Willadine says, my name's Captain Moxley and we'll lower our weapons as soon as you lower yours. This is my crew. You were on the other ship. She, the captain says she doesn't lower her weapons. No. We live on this planet. We don't know what this planet is. None of our scans have found it on any star charts. Willadine smiles. We crash landed here eight years ago. She's, uh, she looks at you. I'm still holding my weapon, too. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> I've still got my shotgun trained on them. I've got my Gauss got rifle. Spear. <laughs> Do they <laughs> still got your spear? <laughs> 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 really so, wants are they still standing in the middle of the in the middle of the <laughs> like, middle of the clearing, <laughs> spear in hand? I, oh I remember everybody else's clothes are tatters. They have gods. Uh, my clothes are pristine, except for that new laser shot. And I have a fucking spear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Willadine, I don't you have a sword? You have you uh you're oh, trained yeah. in yeah, but I have a blade as yeah, maybe I have my blade too. Hmm. Um just crash crash landed here. What how? This we're we're in the middle of the rift. There's no way to get here. We don't even we misjumped. That's the only way we we were able to we ended up here. Not a lot of that going around. Yeah, we, we don't answer. know. Do we know like how we don't know how it happened, right? For yeah, us, we just had a missed jump. Know. It was just we had a, like jump. a jump. Yeah, yeah. we're jumping. Probably the cat. Probably it was the not cat. Blame, right. we, blame, blame, we blame the cat. I blame Scrap. Scrap. Scrap got in the vents Scraps. again. Uh, Willardine says, seems like we have a lot we can discuss, but I'd like to do that once you don't have a pistol pointed at my face. It's like twice in one day. <laughs> right. Fucking twice in one day. <laughs> Everyone's pointing guns at me. <laughs> All right, what do you want to roll? Ooh, leadership. Yeah. Yes. Lay down have, the law. Do you have persuade or I, diplomacy or diplomat? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, no, but I have jack of all trades. I would say this is, you could either do diploma, diplomat or, but it's probably gonna be more persuade. Diplomat's more for like negotiating. Mm, you know, okay. Higher level deals. Um, leadership, you know, if you were commanding her or trying to inspiring her to drop her weapon, I would. It can't I would be go. for negative stuff. <laughs> like, give her, give her a rousing to my speech. Sword, huh? <laughs> yeah. Or that. Uh, yeah, I'm captain okay. of this planet. Do any yeah. of you want to like chime in to help on the persuade roll, perhaps? I'm in a tree, Matthew. Do they even know I'm up there? <laughs> oh yeah. The, Do I the, hear everything? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> anybody very Arthur, social? Arthur is terrible at this. But he is going to step up, and he is he's going to explain, like, we saw the tra crash from, you know, our, our our home. We came to, to help survivors and 
render aid. And yeah, we, we came to help you, not to threaten you. All right. You want should we task chain this? Do you want to give me a persuade roll? Okay, well, uh, my social is a minus one, but my persuade is a one, so that just cancels out. Great. <laughs> yep. Nine. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. Uh, so you can take a plus one. Whoever, anyone else want to get on this task chain before Sydney makes the final roll? Yeah. Can I do Can I do a streetwise check? Uh-huh. To just be like, Look like you guys have been through the ringer with that crash of yours. You're banged up. You don't know where you are. I'd say we'd have the advantage. You don't want a firefight right now. I All bet right. you're gonna try some space weed. <laughs> I and I give them some weed. I know how to I know where to get <laughs> weed, bro. <laughs> you know where to get weed around here, I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a four. That's not good. Okay, that is a failure. <laughs> Maybe I don't know where to get weed. <laughs> I thought I did. I thought I worked. It's just swag. I'm sorry. It's just seats. Alicia, you were up in a tree, but you they do one of the the, uh, the guy in the cowboy boots has one of his pistols trained on you. Ah, oh, man. I was so hoping you, to like... Well, if you wanted to try to absorb the blow of uh, Skid's failure, Skid's horrendous failure. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> You're famous. Um, You'd be like, you know who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, I'm famed author. How am I doing it though? Like, am I, I yelling from the tree? Am I am I coming down? Uh, what skill are you using? Yeah, yeah. I I think as as soon as well. No, I don't. I honestly don't know if she would come out of the tree. Would you? If you were you, up a tree, you don't have to. Of, you don't have to. Just yeah. What's what what skill do you think you're using? Persuade or? You could arrow oh. flint it. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Sherwood. We're in the Sherwood. I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, I have language survival. I don't have first grade. I, uh, I have a zero in social. <laughs> um, human so, education? Uh, I mean, no, it'd have to be a skill. Just, but you have jack of all trades, right? That's true. I have, I have jack off. Okay. <laughs> I have jack off. <laughs> no, oh, jack of <laughs> Jack of Jack Sydney. Make a Jack what off. What a coincidence. Jack what did you call Jack. them? Great, now they're going to shoot us. They start firing. <laughs> Jack of. <laughs> That's an eight. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, but it, it is, you take a minus two because of the skit's failure. Um, so, sorry, Sid, you take a minus two to this roll. Okie dokie. Okay. Fine. Eight. Uh, okay. So the uh, the man, the guy with the mustache and the military haircut, he's like, "Who do you work for? What proof do you have of who you are?" And then, but then the captain is like, "Easy, Bert. Easy. I think, I think we can all agree to lower our weapons. Count of three. One, two, three. You all lower your weapons. They all lower yeah. their weapons. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Trust. <laughs> uh, you are you are right there. And she's talking to you, Willow Dean. Saw you take a pretty nasty hit. Who are you firing at? Somebody saw somebody shooting at you. I re re returned fire. Thought they might be shooting at us. Were they on the other ship? You're, you would know more than us. You've been here. We're the ones who just crash landed on your godforsaken planet. Two ships crash landed. Yes, yes. We saw the we saw the other one crashing at the same. But we don't know who they are. Wait, you guys aren't together. You hear from the tree. <laughs> they all fire at the tree. Like, yeah, ah! no, stop, stop. <laughs> no, uh, no. We're. A, we're the crew of a freighter. We're making a supply run along the island's crossing back to Imperial Space. In for five... Poltec? Poltec. No, no, we don't work for Poltec. We're independent. We're just independent haulers. We take what jobs come our way. I'm uh, I'm going to be attempting to read service thoughts. Ooh. Okay, go ahead. Good, good. Good. Get their ass, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> Little do you know we have a psychic dog. <laughs> uh, so, eight... 
nine, uh, which, let's see, where, where was it? I was just looking, uh, it's uh, page 230, by the way, Matthew. Um, the, it targets eight, so I have an effect of one. Effect of the check determines the clarity of the telepath's perceptions. Uh, it's just, I'm only reading their surface thoughts. Um, uh, if they're okay. telepathic, they're, uh, uh, it won't work, but if they're not, they're unaware of the activity. Um, so, so the you're naturally get anything. So you're shielded too from any other potential psychics. Yeah, okay. I have to like give them permission to like enter my mind. Cool. So your mind. I'm, I am going to be like, I'm just going to read the thoughts. Like you guys, you guys like lying or they like just like what's what's going on in their head. Okay, so are you, you can do all of them at once, right? You can kind of just do the group? Um, I don't know if I can do the group. I think I can really only get one. One at a time? All right, so you're going to do the captain who was just talking? Yeah. All right, so the captain, she, you don't, you get the feeling she's telling the truth. They are. She is the captain of a freighter. Uh, they were on an island's crossing. They were, they, they, they did miss jump. Um, the others, so you get a surface thought. She's trying to make, she's trying to keep it cool. Like you get, like you get the overwhelming sense. She's just trying to like, Keep the, the, keep things from getting out of hand right here. Um, you have the obvious kind of um, worry and you know massive encroaching fear that they've just crash landed on a planet in the middle of the Great Rift and with no way to get get off. Um, she also there's also kind of a deep sorrow that's kind of pumping up again. Uh, loss, like a kind of grief. Um, yeah, those, that's all kind of mixing together. But mostly, I think over, the overwhelming is just like her trying to just like keep, keep, keep things, keep the tension low and negotiate her way through this without get making things worse. All right. We, we were okay. we were mid jump. We're about you know oh. two three days in, and then all of a sudden, you know, the jump field failed and. We came out of it with no power, being pulled in by the planet's gravity, and we, we our, our, our engineer, and she points to the man with the, the mustache, he managed to get some power uh, back online, and enough but, but enough to maybe stabilize the, the crash, but at that point we were crashing, and Denny, she points at the guy on the cowboy boots, did all he could to set her down gently, but we don't know what the hell happened to us. What are your names, Denny? Ah, oh, forgive me, forgive me. Ah, uh, yes, my name is Captain Allison Fenrazi. This may I introduce Bertram Samuels, our engineer. And Denny Cooper, our pilot. Bertram? Bertram. Bertram? Bertram. 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 B-E-R-T-R-A-M. A-M. Bertram. Bertram. Willity this is just a podcast of people saying Bertram. <laughs> Willity yeah. kept saying, she, under her breath, Bertram. And she's Captain Housie. Finrazi. Finrazi. And Denny. Cooper. 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 Okay. It's like a handsome for names. Were there any more? No. Just, oh, oh, you're asking. You're asking them, not me. Yeah. Well, I guess Matthew gave us the secret answer. Oh. There are. We lost a. We lost two in the crash. Hmm. Yeah. Um, at this, Swan's gonna come down from the tree, and they're gonna notice that she does have a long-range scope rifle that's fitted with a reflex sight and a laser sight on her hip, and she just says, "Well, I have good news and bad news for you. Um, we actually arrived here the exact same way you did—a missed jump. But you're not alone. The bad news is we have no idea how to get off this place." And there's a plant monster. <laughs> and there's also giant uh, uh, tre- uh, tremor-like creatures. Did you ever see the movie Tremors? Uh, tremor-like <laughs> creatures uh, that will eat all of the cayenne-like creatures. There's cayenne on this planet, if you're familiar with those. Cayenne we don't eat pepper. them, the sacred. Oh, yeah, hi, cayenne, they're tasty, says the pilot. Well, yeah. I have a you best have a, friend. You have a cayenne drumstick, just like you're out at a fair somewhere in some some planet, in some garden world. And he's walking around with a big old drumstick. No. I, I, yeah. There will be no eating of cayenne. 
They put we the cut, right? eat cayenne. <laughs> I'm literally a carnivore. <laughs> we do eat the cayenne, but we yeah, respect you don't have little them. choice. <laughs> We uh, apologize after we eat. There's the named ones and the food ones. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. How do you, how, 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 just out of curiosity, how do you tell the difference between the named ones and the food ones? I make ones? them collars. One this has is, a name, the other doesn't. Yeah, this is unimportant. <laughs> That's a simple question. Captain, I don't understand the naming and the naming and the, and she's like, all right, all right. <laughs> I am uh, Captain Willardine Faye Moxley. It you, was you, your ship, the cr your, your ship that crashed here. No, actually, we were stationed uh, on a place called the Bucket. It was a piece of shit. We were there for four years together, and on the on the day we were supposed to leave, we were picked up by also a freighter. Uh, we were assigned the job by Poltec, and they were supposed to take us to a nearby planet. Uh, we blew up the Bucket, left, and. Our jump drive also malfunctioned or s something happened. Um, the captain of that ship died. So you, 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 you've been out here, you've been... Eight years. How did you survive? Eight years? You must have thought, must have, must have thought all hope was lost at a certain point. <sighs> well, yeah, I mean... Well, we've we, got the, we, the power of friendship. Yeah, there's we two. survived with the power of friendship. There's, there's water <laughs> on the planet. Oh, friendship. Answer. Friendship as well. I've been gone for six years. I just recently came back to the camp. And we're all going through a lot. It's a lot to be uh, in such isolation. It's different than space. It's uh, it's different. Got more bugs. Uh, Matthew, I'm, yeah, I'm at least going to try bugs. to do a life scan. <laughs> Because there, there are freaking armed people running around here. Yeah, yeah why are we shooting? True. Why'd they just stop? Yeah. I, have a, I have a minus <laughs> now because uh, oh, my size is getting low. Thing? So. Oh. Uh, so that would be a f uh, five. It just needs a four if they're within five kilometers. So I've got an effect of one. Um. You do not detect any other li any other life uh, aside from you know non sentient life. It's all around. that's kind of all around you, the birds and the bees and the, no, but no other no other uh, humans within five kilometers. And it's only been like a couple minutes since they were a hundred yards away or hundred meters away. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Whoa. You said you said it was white armor. I did indeed say it was white armor. Would you like to roll? Yeah. Would anyone like to roll a check? Yeah, I'll roll a check. Oh wait, on the color that they're wearing? No, the the, the guy that was sure the person that was shooting at you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. But what are they? They're not wearing anything white no, or what? This okay. group, they're in like the the the. I showed you the 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 captain looks really cool, a leather jacket. You yeah, she's cooler yeah. than us. Uh, the there's a guy in cowboy boots, and then the engineers in a like grimy coverall. Okay. Mm. Uh, can I just do a straight education roll? You can do education. Uh, yeah, that'll okay. work for me. Uh, seven. Okay. Um, the education comes to a ten. Okay. Oops. Did it, did it look like that? White in, armor? <laughs> in fact, it does kind of look like that armor on the cover of the book that you're holding up. Mm. Oh, what? Uh. What? Joe's. Seth, wh whose armor is that? Uh oh. Jodani. Oh, oh, really? Joe's. Oh shit. Re That's not uh, good. Do those of you who have military tactics or gun combat want to roll me a military tactics or a gun combat? Yes, I'll roll I do. A gun that combat. would be the captain and hung. Well, I have naval tactics. Is that okay? So you give me a t you get rolled at level zero. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Because military, it's tactics. Military is the. I uh, see. I see. Okay. The ground combat. Uh, nine for Pug. Okay, uh, so Pug, you, I don't, you, I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know what you. Know, we, we've never established like how far off your uh, 
your wars have taken you. I but don't you, think, like, I don't think I he ever fought Jodani. No, but I'm like, did you like but, encounter a unit somewhere along the way? But uh, I don't know. But you you re you recognize it from your training as uh, that was a uh, a personal personal energy weapon Riebchi, which is the standard laser carbine of the Jodani consulate military. Wow, it's like ooh, whoa. Um, who and I'll, if, you, if someone wants to give me a social standing check, I, there's a little like I can give you a little more information since you spotted the armor. Uh, I rolled Are a any of us good at that? I rolled a nine with my social. Five. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> is there anything I can add to that though? Like my. Uh... No, this is a straight social standing. Oh, uh, okay. Nine. Nine. Yeah, no, it's Jodani, but that's all you. That's all you. All you know. Do you share this? Do you share this with your new, uh, your new, uh, your new human friends? Ooh. Oh, I, yeah, because oh, I. I know, right? Yeah, you know. It's like, uh, well, sounds like you dragged a Jodani here along with you then. And you say that and all three of them kind of like react a little bit, like not just surprise, but also a little fear. They're like Jodani. That's, the, that's, that's the proper response. Yeah. The, 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 the people that, that started shooting at us that you chased away are we're wearing Jodani armor. Oh shit, I just thought of this. If they are Jodani, there's a great chance that they're Scions, and if so, Seth, you would not be able to detect them with your thing, right? Matthew's smiling, Did you Matthew's- just, just say that out loud? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that was, that was the reason I <laughs> thing. They between. were they were 100 meters away. I just did a five kilometer scan. Do you, I, they couldn't get that fast through the woods, at all the rocks and everything. So it's like, no, they, they've got to be within range. I'm not reading them. You said they were white. Is that what they looked like? So that was the whole trait of thought of like, great. So I, hey, yeah. the bright side, I can't be scanned by them either. The rest of you are screwed. But uh, do you, the Seth or Skid or, or Sydney or Alicia, would you give a give us a quick intro on the Jordani consulate for those who are not uh, listening, who are not intense followers of the traveler world? Can I say what I think it is? Sure. sure. I th aren't the Jordani uh, human human like? They're humanoid. Human species, human subsect. They are human. Yeah. They're human. They're humanity. They're human. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're <laughs> highly technologically advanced and very militarized. And I'm pretty sure they want to take over, like the current uh, government imperium. Right? Like, are they? They're like they're trying to take over. Am I right? It's they're complicated. In a, yeah, they're they're, in a they're psionic. Okay. Yes. Yeah. One of the, so when, that was my you, dumb explanation. So, now, Seth, tell the right so the, thing. So, in the ancients, three hundred thousand years ago, went to a little rock ball called Earth. They just took a bunch of humans. They did changes to them. Just dropped them on different worlds. One of them was the Zodani, who are are very inclined to be psionic. Uh, they have a very unified sense, and part of that's through their psionics. Is uh, they kind of like one mind. They want to just rule. The Imperium is terrified of psionics because the idea of like they can control you against your mm. will, sort of deal. Uh, and uh, actually, I just read a book talking about them. Was the uh, like they're workers and menial jobs? They'll psionically tell them it's like you like your job, you feel job satisfaction, and like that's the type of thing they do uh, to even their own citizens. And I feel like when they were created, like Mark, Mark Jackson, who's the guy created Mark Miller. Mark Miller, Mark Miller. I feel like when he, like, it feels like this is sort of a, uh, uh, analogous to like, uh, 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 communist China from his, from ah. the perspective of someone writing in, you know, 1977, this is kind of what the, it's the, the, the flavor of it a little bit. Can yeah, I ask a question? So. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Oh, I was going to ask. So like in that vein and the psionic stuff, which I'm not crazy familiar with, are the Zodani like so um, ingrained in their culture because they are being psionically controlled by like their own population? Like, 
are they like re like hypnotized constantly? Like you like you you love your job, like you love what you do. Are they like uh, the, Borg? No, the, hive mind. The, no, yeah, no, the no. non-psionic Zodani are the ones that are like you get menial jobs and like you love it and you're you're happy. The huh. psionic ones, yeah, the ones like that become like caste like, system. It's a, okay. it's a very they intensely their warriors and their, society. Yeah, yeah their yeah. leaders. And, there's, uh, there's like it's three castes. You have the proles, who are the non-psionic population. Then you have uh, intendants, who are kind of the middle class, psionically trained middle class, and then the nobles, um, who ha- hold all the important jobs in government and. Business. Can a psionic affect a psionic, or is that just like? You are shielded. Then it's like it's like a battle of wills. I think at that point, right? Interesting. Oh, yeah. the, who, who's the stronger one? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Not me. I'm worried yeah. about Arthur. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <my God>. no. <laughs> well, oh no. <laughs> in, in an hour, if I don't use my psionics, I could start gaining them back. But until then, I have a psi of two. Oh, so okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is like this is this okay. is scary. Then this is really scary. Yeah. It's very yeah. it, I will say we're nowhere near. Jordani space. They are a rival of the Imperium. They are, you know, they're they're, they're adjacent yeah. to the Sextor, though, right? Isn't the it, consulate it, like the consulate? The Jordani consulate's right over. Yeah, it not is. near the Rift. Yeah, yeah. It's so like, you have the whole from... you have the whole behind the claw section of the Imperium, and then you get and then you like as you head. Um, hold on, I have to refer to my compass rose. Uh, that's spinward that way. No, I'm showing that the wrong way. Anyway, to the west. On a, what would be the west on a on a on trailing. A, Trailing. In the middle, the yeah. middle west. Trailing, so to the left on the map uh, yeah. is the Jordani consulate. There's a bunch yeah, of yeah. there's a bunch of stuff in between, but yeah, this is you like when you so when you say that the the Bert Bertram Bert uh, the engineer is like we are hell and gone from the Jordani consulate. What would the Jordani be doing all the way out here? What are we what are, doing all the way out? What here? are any of us? Yeah, what are we <laughs> any of us doing here? And you, you can see he's like trying to he's trying to like catch the catch the eye of the captain, but the captain is like is like just like all right, all right, like let's let's hold on. Do you have my pilot here has has been his leg is broken. Do you have our 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 ship's medic was one of those who who, uh, who died in the crash. Do you have any uh, anyone any of you medical supplies back at your camp perhaps? Yeah, I've got my medic this. bag. Made of but, made of yeah. mud and paste and different <laughs> sticks. I <laughs> cut myself. Yeah, we. we which, could do speaking that. of which, Sydney, do you need medical attention? You got shot. Oh yeah, you, you Sydney? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. now too. I yeah. think it maybe quickly. yeah. After the danger has subsided a little bit, Willadine I'm patching her up while this is happening. Yeah, mm-hmm. Willadine right. kind of clutches her chest and realizes that it's a little hard to breathe because she like broke two ribs. Um, you got you this one. You want to do some first aid? Yeah. Who's the best at first aid? Uh, that would be Marley, the guy you always oh. forget, oh. who is oh, basically yeah. a medical doctor at this we point. We have a doctor. Oh, right. oh, I forgot. That's right. <laughs> He's also Willardine. a trick writer. <laughs> <laughs> Willardine, breathing a little heavier, goes, we have a doctor back at the camp, and I have a cayenne that your uh, pilot can ride until we get there. Not, this one is not for eating. Um, <laughs> Your cayenne's up in the up in the mountains. He we have to, to hike a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. No. I also have a plus two to medic. Okay, you, oh. that's more than enough to do first aid. I think that will suit you fine. Do you want to go ahead and roll? Like they're, yeah. they're like they they're like please please treat your. Yeah. We I'll, they've already I, done I first aid to their guy. Okay, uh, I was eleven. Saying, I can medic now too. Oh, you helped me. You're oh. Get in there. Come on, Hug buddy. taught me how. Come on, little fella. <laughs> Come on, little fella. <laughs> okay, I've got I'm a the bag. Sorry, I have to look up the rules for the first aid. The 11 should do it. I'm just looking back how how uh, how much you get back. How it works. It's like one point per effect. I think so. And then after that, we go by slow healing. And I think it's a st- it's an average check, and I'm gonna. All right. Well, you 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 got hit for three, right? That's what made it past your armor. Uh, yeah. I uh, was it three? Yeah, eight. Yeah, and then I minus three off my endurance. All right. Let me look it up in a minute. Uh, 
Yeah, so they're like, well, the other thing I will say is uh, after all this hiking and battle and conversation, night uh, is about to fall. All right. All right. Oh, how far away is your ship? Uh, oh, our ship is uh, maybe an hour's walk this way. 45 minutes. How far, how far well, how- away is it to our camp, Matthew? You're about two hours to the mountains. And then mm. you have to get up, you know, up the switchbacks and into the, into the valley. Okay. Well, how wrecked? How wrecked is your ship? <laughs> She's not wrecked at all, says the, the engineer. Well, do we, do we hold up in it? Yes, yes, of course. You're welcome in our ship. We, we, sure. we can get there, uh, and then we'll go back to your doctor, and he'll, we can help Denny. Um, how are we? We have to get off this planet. How, that's the. How are we going to do that? Well, our first ship? things first. Let's uh, go check out this fella you killed over there. Make sure none of us are crazy. Oh yeah, so you want to go? go like, yeah, I want to make sure. Yeah, uh, give me a recon. Oh, fifteen. Wow. Okay, you don't see anybody. Oh. You do see tracks. There, like, you see tracks that were like, you see your tracks, and then you see another set of tracks that were following you at a distance. Um, and you see, you can see maybe where he, or this, this Jordani person posted up in the gun battle. Um, but you then don't, you, you don't really see how they were treated. Like you don't, you can, there are kind of tracks all around, but it's confusing to you as someone who's with an, even with that excellent, excellent role. Wow. Okay. We look, we look up. Ah, yeah. yeah. Got him. Well, <laughs> got him. Hey, teleportation is a psionic ability they might that's have. That's true. So. Oh, shit. That's true. It's really hard to get. I didn't I didn't qualify, but other people did. It was cool <laughs> oh, to watch. No. Uh, so. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's let's get back to the ship. Let's hold up for the night. Once light happens, I, uh, I, I say we go. Yeah, and, I want to get uh, back to Marley and... And uh, the other two, whose names are for- Trey and Pearl. <laughs> Trey and Learn. Pearl. <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Learn. I've been God. gone for so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Trey and Plurn. I remember them. <laughs> yeah, you remember. I remember them. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. So yeah, you start. To, they you you follow. Captain Fenrazi, Bert, and Denny, who's limping, so you have to move a little slower with, to keep him along for the ride. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so uh, you hike along with these spacers, you're keeping an eye out for other life forms. I mean, these are the first people you've encountered in eight years. Like, it's- Yeah, so we're, we're looking at them, like, sort of curiously, you know? I mean, I don't know. I honestly don't know what we look like after eight years on a remote island to I mean, remote yeah. planet to people. Like, what do we look like? Well, we know Seth. We know. We know Arthur has an immaculately clean suit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but I. Uh, I guess. I guess we're pretty normal looking. But I think they're going to be super curious to us. I'm just. I'm just weirded out that both of those planes crashed at the same time and they're yeah. not related. I mean, it makes me think that there's like a Bermuda Triangle situation going on with like our jump drive got messed up. Their jumped like everybody's like hitting some weird. We weren't the first here. Those those those, those other things came from kinds came from somewhere. Yeah. I, they don't. And it they seems, didn't appear here. This feels like a trade route area too. Like nobody else is out here except these like freighters, you know, who are just shipping stuff around. Yeah. Nothing is near here. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing here. here. The, uh, the 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 captain did say they were they were on the islands crossing, so that was the same crossing you guys were trying to get to. Oh, right, yeah. right. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, you're nowhere near there anymore. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. You know what? Swan's gonna like sidle up as we're walking back to one of them and say, like, I mean, I don't know what you are proficient in star map wise, but you just looking around, you have no idea where whatsoever where we might be. Uh. The captain is. Are you talking to the captain? Or are you talking to the engineer or the pilot? The captain. Oh, no. you know what? She's going to ask that the the swarthy one, the one that has the weird accent, uh, Denny. Denny. Uh, oh, he's there. What, oh, kind hey, <laughs> what kind of money, Denny? You got a buddy, Denny. What kind of money, Denny? 
Uh, how you doing there? Uh, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Don't I recognize you? From where? Oh, <laughs> you might. Um, <laughs> What's your name? I mean, it's very nice to meet you. And she extends down. Dr. Swan Tanner. I read your book. You oh have read God. it. Yeah, it was on. The, we had it on the library on the sh in the library on the ship. You have a copy of my book on your ship? Yeah, I like the cover's kind of, it's, it's kind of gotten torn off a little bit. It's been, it's I don't like hear the about pages it. are all yellow. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a Let physical copy, it. which is unusual in these times. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that, it, I mean, on your trip it has provided you some help and maybe some um, knowledge and uh, for you in your in your travels. A little, maybe, perhaps. Maybe. Oh yeah, it's a great read. I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's, I just, I, I think about my life, and I just, you said that it was just, what's it called? Best foot forward? No, one foot in front of the other? No, what's it called? Put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward, yeah. That's why I say, I would like to do that right now, but as you can see, my uh, my leg's been a little bit crushed. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, I love I'm, him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I would, I would, I would say that I am happy to see you here, but um, to be honest, I, I can't offer you anything to make you feel better about what has just happened to you and your, your crewmates. Nothing. You can't. You, I, I read your words. You're so good with words. You can't. You, I think you could give us a nice, inspiring little sentiment right now to get us through the rest of this hack. I bet you'd be real good at that. I could try. Maybe there's something I can do back at camp, but I mean, at, f at this point, I've pretty much tried everything. I think Not the hardest part of right now is the fact that in eight years, with all of our knowledge and smarts and with the psionic on <laughs> in our group, Wait, we what? still can't figure out what the hell we are. <laughs> <laughs> you say psionic? Sci uh, she yes. said sciatica. We're all, she's been suffering from sciatica. Oh, we all have sciatica. Difficult. That's it. We <laughs> all have. I bet. You know, We've all had terrible sciatica. You crash. You crash on this planet. That can't have been healthy. I'm, I'm not. I want to ask the captain. They're a freighter. Do they have cargo? Hey, you want to ask her? Sidle up to the captain. Uh, uh, yeah. You sidle up to the captain. Uh, well, yeah. Do you, do you know what you're carrying? No, nothing interesting, I'm afraid. Synthetic polymers, or rather the chemical components that will be those polymers, nothing fancy. We're bound for the factories not, on not, Al Alveric. Not, not like tons of Cheetos and beef jerky. And <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> sadly, no. Oh, we do have our standards. We do have our standard space pudding rations, if you've been missing that. <laughs> oh, my God. Like I said, I, I, I was, I was figuring we'd do good if we could get some actual toothpaste, but, uh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, no, 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 tooth, no toothpaste. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, do you guys want to do a check on Alveric? She says they're bound for the factories on Alveric. Yeah. 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 What it's would we really do weird. for that? Edu um, education. Education. Well, I'm not going to do well, but. You're, you're immensely educated, aren't you? I have a zero. Well, you're still well educated. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nine. Roll Jack. You've heard also about it. nine. Uh, ten. Okay, yeah. Swan. Ten. Ten. Yeah, I mean, so you've heard of Alveric. It's a system. Um, they have a. There's a very successful business that operates on Alveric that produces replacement parts for older ships that have been out of production for years. So, hmm. like if you have, a, if you have, a, if you're running a ship that has that's like that no one makes anymore, you can go to Alveric and they'll synthesize replacement parts for you. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's, that's actually that's actually straight from one of the, one of the uh, source materials. I like. That's, I was like, that's, that's really cool. cool. Yeah, I like. I that. wish that existed for many other things. I know. What about my DeLorean? Exactly. How are yeah. you going to service that DeLorean? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I guess, yeah, we just like try to get back to their their ship as quickly as we can. But now it's like yeah. I Ooh. we also have to like keep an eye out because knowing that there's the these that there's possibly probably Jodani here and that we wouldn't have our normal warning system about them that we would otherwise. 
is really concerning to Pug. So he's he's trying to keep his head on a swivel for fear that because mm-hmm. also we've never been down to this part of the planet before. This yeah, is the first time down here. You can see it, like you could observe, but you don't know what's living. Yeah, in this we've forest. never been. Yeah, we had our boots on the ground down here. So he's just like really just trying to stay aware of his surroundings and make sure that we don't get jumped. Yeah. Uh, do you want to roll recon to him? Yeah, I'm gonna do a recon. Uh, seven. Um, I- do, do, so you, there was one ship that came down, but the other one was blasted to pieces. They already said their ship is the one that stayed together, right? Yeah. So okay. this group, this group, their ship stayed together. Uh-huh. Um, the other ship, it didn't get blasted to pieces, but it definitely was like the stress of the fall and the spin it was in. It Disintegration. Broke. Okay. It, it, it just like broke it in, in like okay. two or three pieces. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. We, oh yeah. So you. When, so you uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I would say when we get back to the uh, the ship, uh, I would like to tell Pug that uh, the Joe's can't read me. So when we get back there, can you, I, I would I, I think I would like to do some stuff around the ship, but I don't want anybody to know what I'm doing around the ship. Hmm. Their yeah. ship or your ship? Where we're bunking up. I actually would like to use survival to set up some sort of alarm system of tripwires with bells oh, or string something. string up some cans but or something. I don't want them to know where they are. Right, right. Got our it. new friends. Or you guys. I don't want any any of our Oh, any we know, yeah, because if we know, know where they are, then they would be able to, yeah, okay. But if they can't read me, I can, I can try to put them up uh, okay. and at least maybe surprise them. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, so if you tell me that, then it's just like, okay, I'll, I'll just try to think really hard about J. Edgar Hoover to push that knowledge out of my head. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's so an start. alarm system. Yeah. It's a good and idea. Willa Dean will think about her uh, ex-fiance <laughs> and try to imagine him. Timothy. Um, Timothy. And try to imagine him in uh, different styles of clothing to keep her mind busy <laughs> just so they can't <laughs> well, read it's what's going like- on. You know, mm-hmm. when we get there, I was like, "You guys go inside. I'll I'll be back." And uh, I I, I will I will to. say, Willadine mentions to the group and these new people as well. Um, we leave at at la- at dawn. We leave at first light. We have people back by our ship, and we cannot leave them alone. They are not they are not warriors, and we are not well equipped to to fight psionics, let alone anybody else. Mm-hmm. And we don't Under- have radios or anything, right? No. Out of coconuts, made by uh, coconuts. Yeah, I can, string, I can, strings, I can coconut. possibly one way talk to any of them. I probably, probably like bond oh, yeah. with them by oh. now. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could send a message to Marley. Yeah, I'm actually looking up. What are the costs on this? Yeah. I'd be like, in a few hours, I can do it. But let's see. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's a good idea. And there, and the captain's like, of course, of course. You know, we'll have to transport uh, Denny. Uh, but you know. There's no other life forms on this world. We did just scan. I mean, we barely detected you. That's why we tried to steer for this continent so that we could hopefully find this one. But there, we detected nobody else. Is, is, I don't understand. How could this, this planet isn't on the star charts? And yet there's, this is a, could be a garden class world. This could be, a, a, it's a settle, an e, a no brainer settlement. Is there, is there some sort of natural threat that prevents people from coming here? I mean, I guess it's isolation, but. Oh, there's some hostile wildlife, and yeah. I mean, there's no way to find it, but otherwise, it's a paradise. Well, the strangest thing is these cayenne that are here, we didn't bring them, and they are fully formed. I mean, they have been living here for years and years and years, and there's a lot of them. So, unless somebody crash landed here or settled here long ago, it doesn't really make sense. They're not naturally occurring here. We just get. Our ship, our ship is it was damaged in the crash. I just wanted to get the scanners back online. Maybe we could. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, oh, here it is, right up here. And uh, she, you kind of, you're working through the uh, kind of thick foliage. She says, she's she's not much to look at, but she's been a great friend to all of us. And I, I don't I don't think her story is done yet. Okay, There's just just bear that in mind when when you see her. Uh, and you uh, arrive at a clearing. 
and sitting with its nose half buried in the kind of gray-brown loam, having dug its own furrow, just like yours, through a section of the forest before reaching this clearing, is a weathered and well-loved far trader. Nice. And the captain uh, guides you up, you know, this is it, this is her, this is her. And the captain uh, guides you over to the airlock and types in a code and the passenger ramp uh, lowers and she says, come on in. I'd say, I, uh, I'd like to scout around for a bit, Captain. I'll be over here in a minute. Uh, here you are. You be careful now, because uh, we don't know how many of those Shodani, you say, are out there. I just, we just scout around, just make sure. It, I'll be in a bit. And I like, I share a look with you, uh, Seth, just like, uh, I know what's up. Uh, all right, so um, Arthur goes, scurries off, and the rest of you ascend the ramp. Uh, well, as you approach the ramp, actually, you notice just above where the ship's nose is buried in the dirt, the name of the ship is painted in yellow along the starboard bow. Uh, and the name of the ship is the Kate's Gambit. <gasps> oh! What the fuck? We're, no. gonna take a, we're gonna take a short break for this, uh, this word from our sponsor. <laughs> Say, Michael brings out his holy sword places his heel upon the neck of the serpent. For now, the hour is struck, the trumpet has been sounded, the dead shall walk again. The serpent comes, but upon all of them he shall place the mark of the beast. And we're back. Hey, how about that? That that's the Kate's Gambit. That's the that's ship from up. last, from last <laughs> oh <my> season. <laughs> oh my god. You ever you ever sold a use like your car and then you see it one day somebody <laughs> else is driving it? Yeah. <laughs> this would be like you sold your car and then you see it wrapped around a tree on the other day. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, more accurately be like you sold your car but then went back in time twenty years or, or is at this point, uh this would be what? Eight years earlier, twelve years earlier, my my brain has lost the ability to do math. It was twenty. It's this, twelve years. Twelve years before season one. This was not on the Carfax report when we got the Kate's Gambit. <laughs> exactly. And I don't even know those other characters, and I can't ward. I'm like, you really need to make sure it doesn't have prior damage of crashing into an uncharted planet for God knows how long. <sighs> Like you went so back this in is time before and this is before our, our other characters came into possession of the Kate's Gambit. Yes. <sighs> okay. Well, presumably, right? Because they're yeah. not here. All right. What would have been great is if if Matthew and where he was going in season one, he could talk about the occasional notes we just find sometimes on the ship, like love love letters to Willa Dean's boyfriend. I'm like, oh, you just yeah. find these just yeah. randomly around your ship. Yeah, like, I don't know their note. A cat. <laughs> well, a cat. <laughs> Even <Yeah. it's> right <laughs> here, everywhere. <laughs> Even if I had wanted to do that, I couldn't have because Lord knows that you're, who knows if any of your characters will survive. <sighs> True. Rude. Um, <laughs> yeah, once, yes. once everyone goes inside, I do want to at least set not really like traps as much as a way I, we can hear or signal there's people creeping in the woods. Uh, they're wearing like super futuristic combat armor i don't think my punji stick is going to do anything so it's mostly like what yeah you know. great so this would be a survival uh, uh, yeah, check yeah, you yeah yeah you hit a string and it, and it yanks the cat's tail really hard and it yells i don't know i, I <laughs> <laughs> well it, it emits a sound at a frequency that only your ears can hear <laughs> the barger equivalent of a silent alarm um <laughs> Yeah, you want to give me a survival check? I would say difficult, right? To this is probably more than an average. Like you're not just trying to identify something out in the woods. This would oh, be yeah, hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I use intellect or education or either or? Either or. Okay. 
Cool. I have a plus three. And seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Okay. So you set up some traps and some mooring systems that will give you alert you if anyone comes near the ship. Um, mm. Yeah. So you all. So Arthur, eventually you join them, but the, the rest of you walk on board the Kate's Gambit. This far trader. <laughs> oh, it's not much to look at, as you know. Uh, standard far trader, two hundred ton hull, jump two capable. Obviously, right right now, pretty clearly inoperable. Um, do you want to do? Do you want to? Anyone want to roll anything to see if you can assess the state of things? Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. I'll like give you like jump coils. <laughs> yeah, and I mean they're like, they're like take me to your I engine room. To <laughs> Could I roll? Mm, I was going to say pilot, but is that specifically only for when you're piloting? Yeah, I would do recon if you can't do anything else, but otherwise mechanics or engineering might be a good... I could do mechanic. I have spacecraft one, but only piloting. Ooh, that's piloting, okay. right? Yeah, that's, that's probably not going to... Yeah, pilot one. Um, that's only yeah. an eight. I'll do a recon as well. <sighs> yeah, uh, six. So from what you're seeing, I, it looked like it does look like their pilot, Denny, managed as best he could to kind of put the ship down softly, but the ship still sustains some pretty serious, uh, a pretty serious hull breach in the aft section, probably near its engine room. Um, as you, maybe as you were coming up to it, you got a glimpse inside. You can see one of the two power plants is, is smoking, clearly inoperable. They mentioned they got some power back, so you imagine either they must be able to get something, some juice out of the other power plant. Can I check the the health of the ele- the com? Because I have comms for the electric electronics. I mean, they're out of they're right now. They're on. They're not. They don't have any. They barely have any power. They have enough power to like open the oh, airlock. They open the doors, but right. not much. Not much else. And also, yeah, right. they're, they 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 they'll tell you. They also will tell you like they tried. They they issued maydays as they were going down. You know, they got no response from anyone. Yeah. Um, uh, could I do a salvager profession salvager check just to see the like the integrity of the hull? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Uh, Did you have that? <laughs> I do. Yeah, because I was a salvager <laughs> growing up. Right, right, right. right. I was a ship yeah, you're going through and say, I bet I could get 50 bucks each for each of those yeah. door handles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you, do you still want this? Uh, that's uh, that's a lot 11. of copper in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good copper wiring in here. 11? Yeah. Um, you think overall the ship seems in pretty good shape for having crash landed on a planet obviously like you'd have to patch the hull and the, any of any other, any other hull breaches you don't see um you haven't asked them about the state of the m drive or the j drive but you think you know you'd have to get both power plants operational to get it off the ground but you know maybe it's you wouldn't junk it just yet if, it were, if okay. you were trying to okay. strip it down for wiring okay uh is there anything else um I, just making the connections like between our ship I guess what I'm doing with my role is like is there anything we can take from our ship that's salvageable to use for this ship or like vice versa like any parts that oh, we like, which, yeah sorry. to get something running like I, I don't know just trying to take logs so when we go back to our ship I can be like oh okay we have some of this and we can bring that back do you want to talk to their engineer yeah Willadine walks up to the engineer, uh, which is the not cowboy boots guy, the military guy. Bertram Bertram Samuels. Uh, oh yeah, Willadine's going Bertram Bertram. Bertram. <laughs> you know, it's very unsettling when you say my name that many times like that. Bertram. I've never heard a name like Bertram Bertram. Well, Bertram. Well, I'm sorry. And he's very, well, he's very, he's very, he's like he does, he does not trust you one bit. He's like, well, he's, you don't. You don't have to apologize. I mean, my parents, they named me Willadine Fay. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, no, no, stop apologizing. I like my name. You got a good name. Bertram's a nice name. I, I, I've nice always been partial name. to it, to be honest with you. Well, anyway, uh, I just came over. I was taking stock of what you have and I am not the ship's engineer. You're taking. You were looking. You were inspecting our ship. Of course, I'm inspecting your ship. Don't you want to get it off the ground and out of the dirt? We don't need your help to get it off off the ground. No, I can. I, I have my work cut out for me, but I, we don't need your help. No, thank you. So, what rank are you? When you were in the military, have you, I mean, obviously, you're not now. I, I'm a civilian. 
What's with the haircut? You, well, you were right. I, I once was in the Imperial Navy, and I, uh, old habits die hard. So, what rank were you? Well, I, I mean, it's not important. I mean, I was, I was, not, I was an enlisted man. I was, wasn't, an, wasn't an officer. Uh, just a chief petty officer. Chief petty officer. Chief petty officer Samuels. Yes. <laughs> Why'd you leave? Why did you leave? I didn't. You're still in the Navy. He laughs, he like laughs in your face. I guess technically, yes. I have been stranded here for eight years, but I don't imagine they would kick me out once I return and explain that I'm not some sort of deserter. You, weren't you stationed on some space station owned by a corporation? Like, what did you do to get such a, such a, such a, an assignment like that. You do realize that I am a captain. You do realize that you're not my captain. And I'm no longer in the Navy. Ooh. As the Navy made painfully clear to me at the time. Now, is there anything else? <laughs> oh my... Damn. Damn. Uh, Willadine <laughs> says, <clears throat> as I was saying, I was taking a look at your ship and the damage and trying to determine if our ship has any compatible parts. I am not an engineer. I leave that up to my crew and to Trey, who is back at our ship. He's very smart. Plurn. Plurn is the engineer. Trey, <laughs> I'm not sure what Trey does. <laughs> is Trey's a pilot? I'm the pilot. It's been six you, years, I know. It's, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> you stepped in for Trey when Trey lost her arm in the... Uh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Trey lost her arm. It grew back. It grew back. It grew back. <laughs> it did grow back over the course, back, course of eight years. And, She's and, a gecko. Still, still, and, still and every tingly. year for the harvest, we sacrifice another... Another arm. The rain another God. limb. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> just, Trey. it's worked so far. Insane. We have to keep doing it. <laughs> we appease the storm gods with a sacrificial limb. <laughs> <laughs> this is how traditions get started. This is how it happens. <laughs> and Willie Dean says all that. You'll meet Trey. We sacrifice a limb every every two years. Oh, no. I realize you'd become savages on this planet. No, she doesn't say that. Uh, it's good you'll, meet, you'll meet Plurn, uh, who is uh, the engineer of the ship we were on. Another uh, Vaga, eh? Yes. Oh, Wait. could you tell by my pronunciation of the name Plurn? Plurn. Will you? Your pronunciation is terrible, Captain. Uh, but yes, I, I do recognize a Varga name when I hear it. Plurn's a Varga, and she's an excellent engineer. Anyway... I wasn't saying she wasn't. Ahem. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I was simply saying, perhaps you and Plurn could discuss compatible parts. I am trying to help you, in turn helping my crew, get off of this planet. Okay, I have been trying to discuss compatible parts with her for eight years. If you hook <laughs> him up, oh, I swear to oh. God. Come on, Arthur. This is not the time nor the place. <laughs> sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. We're all so horny. We're all so horny. Eight years. I was None like, of I us are the same species. It's. I wondered last episode. I was like, I wonder if any of them are just going to like, you know, couple up it's been eight years like you like you people get lonely it happens i was I waiting to see if it happened on, on the Look, table after we sacrifice one of the the blops limbs and we and we have the ritual orgy yeah but you know actual yeah. couples you know it's, yeah that's not a commitment die. though i do love that skid i was waiting too for the table to like determine it and like all of them were like you leave camp and your relationship falls apart and i was like yeah. okay well poor Mar yeah. poor marley <laughs> Um, uh, will there be anything else? Yes, if you could make a uniform list of what you're missing. I, Do I have to spell it out for you? Um, all due respect, Captain. Mm -hmm, uh, yes, Petty Officer. It's Chief Petty Officer, and I'm no longer in the Navy. Uh, <laughs> let me, uh, I don't wish to be rude, but... But you're about to be. Go ahead, lay it I on me. I trust you. <laughs> Your story doesn't make sense. Our story barely makes sense. 
We are here, alone on this world, and until I get back to the, back to the area of space where we're supposed to be, I'm not going to trust any one of you. I think it's outrageous the captain let you on this ship for the night. As far as I'm concerned, you should be sleeping out in the woods like you're used to. Excuse me, we're the only thing standing between you and uncertain death, I think so. Well, if the likes oh. of you managed to survive for eight years, I think an experienced crew like ours would be just fine. <laughs> Should I shoot him, Captain? <laughs> no, no, we will not shoot him. Though we don't trust you either, and I'll make that very clear, but... I will come back to your camp when we, when we go tomorrow, and I'll make my own assessment of your ship. Let's Excellent. See if it, anything might be of use. Well, I think we're done here. I am going to wonderful walk to a different area of the ship <laughs> furthest away from you. Could you point me in that direction? Anywhere you like. I'll be in the engine room. I will avoid that room. <laughs> they like each other. <laughs> oh, they're going to be making out, so. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's, 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 we're all so horny in this movie, they get together. Yeah. <laughs> I ship them. I ship them, yeah, I ship them. Yeah, yeah, in this movie, they get together. Well, they want the... Well, they want well, they the, want the, the that's games what we, we that's play. That's what we come here for. <laughs> uh, um, I've, yeah, I walk away. Okay. All righty. Um, okay, yeah, so do you... Um, the captain will offer you food from their supply. She'll offer you the standard issue space pudding. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, pudding. Pudding! And she'll, and she has staterooms available. You know, you should, you know, it's very silly, but like she has staterooms available. You do know, like you can, you do see, you know, there were certain areas that you don't necessarily want. There's still blood on the, uh, kind of blood on the chairs where there was a impact from where the, the knocks one of the two of their crew members. They lost their astrogator and they lost their doctor. Where are um, the bodies? Uh, the bodies are being kept. Where they they were being, they're in the engine room. Actually, <laughs> I don't think Bertram oh. was planning on spending the night there. Jesus. Well, no. they usually have these ships. Usually have uh, like cryogenic storage too for the, like the the deep. Other pow- times, it's the actually like off? under the beds. They've got the cold freezers that are not. They're not the nice cryo bursts. They're the cold freezers. Yeah. That are like, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you do need power to run those though. Yeah. So. Oh. You know, um, it just keeps the flies off. Yeah, they're bo- like they've been body bagged and but and um yeah all right so you you bed down for the night yeah if this, I mean these are like I, if you're not sleeping in the staterooms on the warbler these are the first real beds you slept in, in how many in, you know eight years so yeah, I imagine yeah. um oh my god I bet the sheets actually smell like fabric softener so you know it's like oh, twenty yeah. minutes at first time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, these have probably been laundered uh, like, at some laundered. point in the last eight like, years. Drinking water <laughs> that doesn't leave grit on your teeth, like oh, this yeah. is so good. Yeah. Um, it's also weird too because, like, before we crash landed on this planet, we were stuck in a tin can for years before that. So, I wonder, like, what that feels like to be like back in an enclosed space. Yeah, you know, mm. it's like two extremes that we've dealt with, like over yeah, this, their today recent was, lives. Today was a lot. Today was a lot. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you do uh, take shelter in the ship because that night uh, is the first storm of the storm season. Uh-huh. Not particularly heavy, but it's like there's thunder, lightning, which you've all been used to the past eight years. I mean, mm-hmm. it's truly if you if it weren't so uh, potentially dangerous for you. The light, the, the the electric storms on this planet are truly spectacular. You know, it's like those kind of, like the, when you see lightning and it has like like classic lightning feel. Like it's that. Oh, yeah. it's just, I love it. Uh, but yeah, you feel you hear the rain kind of pelting the hull of the far trader as you sleep. It's, and you're like, you know, like you're this is it's about to get very very bad on this planet. Like you you spent yeah. had spent a couple months truly like indoors, riding out um, riding it out. Matthew, once uh, once my sigh has gotten up to the point I'm not taking a negative to do it, I do okay. want to attempt to send thoughts. Send thoughts. Uh, okay, yeah, great. Can those be uh, overheard by other psychics, or is that like, is that can they not uh, do that? Maybe if they're reading the recipient at the time, uh, but uh, but they can't yeah. like intercept it or something. I don't. I don't know. Like. <laughs> No, Go I'm ahead and send annoyed. thoughts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, I mean, what I'm trying to do is like, 
<laughs> Arthur would probably send it to Plarn. Though mm-hmm. Marley would be the actual intelligent person to send it to because like he's probably guaranteed to tell everybody and everything, but, but he's probably gonna send it to Plarn. Sure. So um <laughs> Let's see if I can. It's actually really difficult. So I got. Hmm. I'd like. <laughs> can I spend two points of luck? Oh. <laughs> sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I needed to get a ten. I got an eight. So oh. I would like to uh, uh, basically say we're safe. Uh, three survivors. Ship. Might need some work, possibly repairable. Zodani are here on on planet. Be on the lookout. Okay. All right. Do you know? Are you? I was just reading. It It doesn't tell me if you're able to know if these thoughts have been received, right? So it's just like you send them, make contact (laughs) with the mind. Yeah, the other would be I'd have to like re- receive thoughts. Is the other one like the surface thought thing? If 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 they're psionic too, we could just like chat and tell jokes. And everybody feels left out because we're laughing. But uh, <laughs> since they're not, it's like two separate checks for me because it's very, you know, I'm the, I'm the only one. Got it. All right. Um, okay. So, yeah, you you fall asleep. One of those, like, it's those, like, beautiful thunderstormy nights. I, I have a great, I have, I have, I feel very romantic about falling asleep to thunderstorms. But, uh, yeah, me too. It's, mm. I love uh, thunderstorms. Yeah. I do too. Uh, the next morning, you wake up, and at dawn, as you promised, the captain and the and Denny on cru- on a cru- on a homemade crutch, and uh, Bert, the engineer, Bertram, they're all ready to go. They're waiting on you. And the, we're right. going. Bertram's like, I thought you said dawn. Do they do dawn differently here on this planet. Well, Dean walks deal? past him without. <laughs> Then it's like, oh, Bert, you're always just joking so much. Don't this is come on him. He's just a he's just a crank. We love him. He loves she, us. It's a, it's all it's all okay. He's been a jerk to Captain. I, I don't know. Like you're a guest here, okay? I mean, you know, we're trying to help each other out. There's no cause to be kind of jerk and everything. I resent the I resent the accusation. I was nothing but courteous. And then he no, turns you're and like goes. snippy and snooty and stuff. You know, that's not. <laughs> I mean, this is not your planet. This is our planet. That's like our customs here on this planet. Like, that's, that's not cool, man. Oh, you have customs you know? on this planet now. Yeah, well-established customs over the last eight years. Pug. And, uh, savages. We haven't lost you know. our sense of humanity. Pug, exactly. Pug, d- don't worry. We just um, we just won't tell little old Bertram about the uh, the step and the, the passageway when we get to And then the, uh, well, Ooh. we could tell him about the... We can tell him about the cliffside, but maybe it's better we don't. He'll figure it out on his own. He seems like a smart guy. Yeah, you can figure it out on your own. We won't tell you about the step you have to go through and the (laughs) tunnel and everything, where that is, up halfway up. We'll tell you. Oh, and we should remind him. See how you feel then. We should tell him about the underground. You know what? He'll figure it out as soon as he steps. It'll be a fun surprise. He'll figure it out. He seems super smart. This guy's sure. I know, Pug. I know. <laughs> he, he, the, the, he, and Bertram is like watching all of this happen. And he's like, whatever. And he just goes down, <laughs> he goes down the ramp. All right. So you guys are hiking back through the forest. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Elisa. We don't have our cayenne at all. They, or we just no. going to hike it back. We're just going to no. hike it They're back up, up in the mountain. Um, but we're making our way back that same way. You, may, you yeah. came coming back the way you came. Yeah, yeah. I imagine okay. you're being very careful though, because you know you yeah. could be more attacks. Um, mm. You give me a, give me a survival roll. Any of you who want to roll to see if you can kind of you know pick up your path and maybe make a little get a, make a little extra time back up. Does that make sense? Is what is survival rolled with? Endurance, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you can make a case. I'd mean, be happy to remake a case for whatever you want. Um, if you want to do it with endurance, if you want to do it with strength or dex, if you're trying, well, it depends on what you're doing. In this okay. case, you know, education, and intellect might be might be good. Uh, I'm gonna do strength. All right. Uh, I'm doing dex. All right. I'm doing dex as well, and I'm adding survival, of course. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. Nine. Nine. I got a. 
12 with the plus two for my dex. 12, nice. okay. Seven. 10. All right, so, so Pug, uh, you try to like muscle your way through, like, I think I know a shortcut. And you're just like trying to like barrage your way through, but, and then Wildeen's like, actually, I think maybe this way. And she kind of like nimbly hops over some stones on a little stream and finds you, cuts her way through. You do make excellent time getting back through the woods, despite awesome. the fact that you have a guy on crutches with you. Like, My, this is a lot harder to hike when you're on crutches. Maybe I'm isn't just, it? maybe I'm carrying him. Oh, that's ah. good. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you carry, right. the, yeah. You carry him like a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, oh, uh, like, I hope you let me buy you breakfast when we're back in civilization there, there sir. <laughs> very, this very guy's grateful. so nice, and the other yeah. one's it so is. mean. Such a fun contrast with your friend. Oh, oh, well, you know, I think it's just it's just good to be good to be good to be kind. Good to be kind, people. You never know, never know what what they're bringing to the situation, right? You never know. You know, I, one time I was at a I was in a customer service, uh, you know, altercation, if you will, uh, about my 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 light my pilot's license, and I was talking I was talking to this guy who was at at the counter. You know, he, he he was just being real rude, and I was just trying to you know, kill him with kindness. Eventually, I realized, you know, who knows? This guy might have just like he might have been shot in the head yesterday. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I start to like try to rock him gently to sleep so it'll be quiet <laughs> oh yeah that's nice how oh. you're, really, uh, it's a, it's a, you're really good oh, at people, you know? baby don't oh my god I put I press his head up against my chest so he can hear my heartbeat oh my god uh, Arthur's like see ya <laughs> uh, so yeah eventually after a couple hours, you make it out of the forest, and there in front of you is the waterfall just cascading down along that rock wall. Uh, this must be pretty spectacular, too, this, like, gigantic waterfall. How yeah. high is it? I said, I estimated 50, 60 meters. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. that's pretty so awesome. It's, I mean, it's not like Niagara Falls, but it's still pretty huge. You know, that's, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but you know the way up. You don't have to climb it or anything, and you can... You can yep. Carry Denny up the up the uh, up the kind of switchbacky path through the mountains. Um, yep. So you, I'm assuming you make your way up there. Uh, Swan is helping uh, Captain because I know she's breathing heavily after being. Oh, shot. I'm better. Oh wait, what happened with that med- medical check? Oh, I never looked it up. I think you're. I think. <laughs> you're, I think. You're, I, I think you can restore three points. With my points. effect, I think I got all your points back. Okay. Plus, cool. Cool. Plus cool. you had a Are night. You better. Plus you had a night of rest. So yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm better. I I panicked. And in my, <laughs> yeah, I can't, couldn't find the page. Uh, I'll find it when we stop recording. Yeah, yeah, I could okay. take it back after, but I'll put it back for now that I've healed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. So as you're walking up, you you're kind of exposed to the open air, so you can as you're switchbacking, you see you know, all of these. Occasionally, you kind of duck through a tunnel in the mountain, then you come back up, um, and you are you. It's hard work. You're not like not like it's not like it's stairs or an easy path. It's you're ascending pretty high. Um, the uh, you all are acclimated by now to the altitude of being up in the mountains. The others are going to take a, uh, a penalty, or they're going to roll. They're going to roll endurance checks to see if they're affected by altitude sickness. Um, and then, oh, you're probably about thirty meters up, as you know, straight up at this point. Uh, mm-hmm. And you hear something. Roll, <laughs> roll recon. Recon. Oh boy, you should have taken recon. What are they thinking? Like education, intellect. Either one, depending on how you. Nine. Nine. Fuck. Eleven. Eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Ooh, Ele- Eleven. Uh, no, I have zeros in all my education intellect. Could I roll strength or dexterity to my recall? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eleven it is. Eleven. Okay, so everyone, everyone but Pug, I think, actually. You, you're like kind of like you're, like you're working hard, you know. You're, and Pug is carrying Denny, so maybe that's why he doesn't see this. Uh, but you, you see kind of high above you against the blue of the sky, what looks like some small dark dots. And all of you who saw it, you all know what these are because of the time you felt on the planet. These are uh, large winged bird of prey that have oh, a, birds no. of prey. Oh. That have a nest somewhere oh, nearby in the mountains. Okay. Oh, no. and oh. They are diving right at you. Or oh. And I don't know if this is a Britishism or just an animal wildlife term. I didn't know. They are stooping. Stooping. Uh, yes. That's a mean thing you, to call them. You're no, no, stooping. It's, it's what they're they're stooping. No. 
Just what do you remember? <laughs> you would estimate you have about twelve second, twelve seconds to do, to do to do something. What would you like to do? Spears up. I would like to fire. <laughs> I would like to fire my Gauss rifle into the air, which has a suppressor on, so it won't make a loud noise. But hopefully, the bullet will scare the pattern and make them scatter. It's All dinner. Right. So why don't we roll initiative? Okay. A nine for Pug. Nine for Pug. Seven. Seven for Swan. Arthur's Eleven. twelve. Oh, yeah. Arthur, you have excellent initiative. I, yeah. It's it, you can Yay. use intellect. That's my biggest, my best one. Uh, Willa, Eleven. Eleven for Willa Dean. Okay. All right. So we'll do. Let's go in initiative order. I got to roll for these guys. Uh, okay. So Arthur, you are first up. Okay, well, this is why we have Spears people. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> going to uh, basically like, hold it up in a receiving pose because this is the time when dinner might serve itself. So you're going to like oh, brace yeah. the spear, as they would say in Pathfinder? Yeah. But also if I have to adjust it to, to catch my meal. All right. Or keep uh, it off me either way. Great Willadine. Uh, I fire my Gauss rifle. You fire your Gauss rifle. Okay. Yay. So, yeah. Go ahead and give me a shot. Go ahead and fire. All right. Here we go. That's a eight, nine. Uh, would it be strength? Dexterity. For gun Dexterity. Combat. So, 11. 11. Okay. So, that hits. Um, roll damage. Okay. My Gauss rifle is 4D. Oh, my God. Nice. Yeah, that's a hefty. Wow, wow, wow. All right, so six. 14 damage. Okay, you hit one hard. Uh, and it is, uh, it, you, you don't kill it, and it, it, it does not scatter them. These what? Guys, you, you know from living up in the mountains, these, are, these birds do not mess around. All right, well, at least I shot one, but it's not dead. Um, oh my God, Swan! Do you want to take a? Do you, you want to give me a science, a science xenobiology or an animals role to identify it? Yeah, that actually makes sense. All right, I'm gonna use my education plus my animals plus science. Ooh, what? That can't be. Oh, forget it. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, forget it. Sixteen. <laughs> so, it's a science xenobiology. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's that's every yeah. Those are my highest. No, I think you, highest, yeah. you you just add your xenobiology, not like your science score. I can't add my like education. To that. Uh, education, yeah, you do. Okay, add, yeah. It sounded mm -hmm. like maybe you were adding two categories of skill. I did there. Xenobiology. Okay, so yeah, animals. Yeah, but xenobiology is two. Okay, so yeah. these are known as valrocs. V a l r o c. They are kind of they're a large flying creature, common like kind of both a bird and a reptile they have a kind of kind of a reptilian face um and yeah they are so the, they are known for their stoop attacks so they they can they kind of they Stupid. zoom down from a very high they tuck their tuck their wings zoom down from a very high angle but what the valrocs do they're known to attack um kind of like flyers and Yachts and other 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 aircraft, they will they kind dive of, bomb. They'll dive and then come up from below and rake them from and kind of rake them from below. It's a, mm -hmm. apparently quite terrifying. Um, and these are another creature that's like spread out along among the stars. Yeah, I mean they're not incredibly common, but they're they're like, but they're not unique to this planet. They're not unique to this planet. In fact, if with a sixteen, I'll tell you they're actually mostly found in Solomani space. Somebody oh, really? brought so I these know here. These birds. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> what the fuck? I definitely know these birds. Guys, oh my god. Guys, guys, <laughs> out of out of game, out of character. Do you think we're on a zoo planet? You know that is funny. Like a that zoo planet. Like there there are planets. Like I remember, like an old traveler lord. There are like a couple of planets. That was when they were because they're like all the bunch of different species of humanity yeah. kind of seated all everywhere. And all of them, like in their, when they would try to like figure out their own sort of theories of evolution, they would all break down because they weren't really related to or descended from the oh. native fauna on the planet. With the exception of one planet, they were like, oh, there are other like mammalian vertebrates, like all this other stuff. But yeah. the reason that they came to that conclusion was because it was a zoo and there were other like creatures from Earth that had also been planted there. 
so they all sort of at odds with each other. I love Traveler so much. This is like <laughs> this is one of my <laughs> favorite so like sci-fi settings. It's it's great. Yeah. That is cool. Th- that would explain the existence of that that the giant asparagus that tried to bite me like years ago. <laughs> That's right. It would. Asparabeast. That <laughs> giant asparagus, asparagus yeah. that I now have to work into my story. <laughs> <laughs> the toxic asparagus. We went from space broccoli to giant asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> um, they evolve quickly. Yeah, this planet's right. fucked up. Pug, it is your turn. Uh, okay, so I'm going to very gently uh, toss Denny off the side of the cliff. Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah. And, I thought we were, uh, I thought we were bonding. Uh, <laughs> so I don't Darn think it. I can actually if I actually if I do just drop him, can I like use my my lesser action to draw my shotgun and then yeah, fire? S- significant action, put him down, minor action, pull out your shotgun. You can't fire I would say you can't fire, you okay. can definitely put him down and get your shotgun. Alright, I will lay him down and then just so say, hold on there, little buddy, and then I'm gonna pull out my shotgun. I, was, I don't even know what the range under shotgun is, but I, at this point, they're probably out of range. Like yeah. they're, they're, they'll be in range very soon. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I have slug rounds, so it's actually 50 meters. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so you, obviously, you can probably hit them next round. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, cool. Um, all right, Swan, you're up. Okay. Um, yeah, so Swan looks right up and knows exactly what these little assholes are. So she's going to like sort of do this like slow motion, like dive for cover because she knows what they do. And as she's diving for cover in slow motion, she's yelling, they're Valron, they're Valron, you know, take cover. Oh. And she has her Gauss up. Now, the Gauss rifle has a laser pointer, reflex sight, and laser sight. So it's pretty accurate. I guess that depends and on so the user. Important. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it has a laser. So it does have a laser pointer. It has a laser short. How far away are the birds? I would guess probably at this point like a hundred meters. They're okay. diving towards you. You you with a Gauss rifle, you should be able to hit them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a medium Gauss rifle. So it's a four. It's a four D. Ready? I'm ready. Do I roll anything with this or just the straight roll? Gun combat. So dex plus dex. your gun combat bonus. Okay. Okay. They have four plus. Eight. Eight. And eight is a hit. Um, nice. So yeah, give, give me your damage. Are you are you trying to hit the one that's, that Willa Dean already shot or, one of the, or a different um, one? I mean, if, if this is really happening, it's going to be the one, I guess, if any of them see me or the one that I see first. If, if, the, if I notice, like, if the one that the Dean shot is the one that is the seems to be the closest, scoping closest to us, and that's the one I'm going to go after. It's pretty far away at this point, so maybe you're shooting at a I mean, I imagine it's kind of like a duck hunt or like a, or like, yeah, you know, like everyone's just like firing up in the air. Yeah. How many black spots do we see? <laughs> Six. Ugh. All right. Yeah. Give me. All give right. me. The, give me the damage. Yeah. Here you go. Twelve. Okay. You hit another one. Uh, again, you do a lot of damage, but it's still coming. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, all right. It is the Valrock's turn. They continue their stoop. Uh, Captain Fenrazi draws her shotgun, but is not confident she can hit it at this range, so she'll take a minor action to aim. Uh, Bert will shoot with his laser carbine Ooh. and hit. Um, nice. Do some damage with that. Okay, he hits another one for ten points of damage. All right. Uh, is, what are these things? And then uh, Denny will dr- Denny <laughs> from the ground. <laughs> he won't bother to get up. He'll just draw both his pistols and just start shooting wildly. Uh, what laser pistol? Laser pistol and uh, and revolver. He misses. Uh, okay, Arthur, it is your turn. I I I really don't have much more to do other than hunker at right to receive with my spear and stab it when it gets <laughs> really Why don't, really close. We, do you want to mechanically call this? Oh, it's like a can we, well, it's, Aiming is only for range attacks, but you want to call it an aim for a melee attack? Yeah, like the equivalent. Like, we'll yeah. make up a rule. I, I, yeah, I, I, bracing I that, would that, be that, like the equivalent of an aim. I, I, I would, the the Braveheart, you know, hold, yeah, hold, hold. Nobody else has a spear. They're wondering why my face <laughs> turned blue. Hold. Who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
Willa Dean. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna shoot again with my Gauss rifle is my most damaging. So, yeah. I mean, are they are any of them close enough to me for melee? No. No. They're, okay. You think you would think based on when you when you all first saw them, they'll be they're going they'll stoop again. This, they'll dive some more this round, and then they'll be on then you. Then they'll be okay. So yeah, I'll try to shoot one from afar. Okay. You uh, could also, you could, since you don't have to, if you're not moving, you could aim and shoot, and give yourself a bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Let me aim, stand my ground, and try to lock in. Okay, so six, eight. What's the bonus for aiming? Plus, plus one. Plus one. Per so that's an spent. 11. All right, you hit. Same one? Yeah, same one. All right, you blow that one out of the sky. Okay. Nice. <laughs> and a puff of feathers, it, it falls. <laughs> All right. Tell your friends! <laughs> yeah, I just hope it lands somewhere where we can recover it. I, mean, I know. That's it, good falls, it falls just out of reach. It falls no. just by you, and you're like, oh, no. Uh, uh. Um, so we could, I could bring that back to Plur, and I'm sorry. Make <laughs> <laughs> an offering. Uh, Pug, you are up. Uh, all right, so Pug is going to level his shotgun, his suppressed shotgun. Yeah, he says the same shotgun. It's basically his... Uh, the guy in um, No Country for Old Men is going to suppress her on it. Um, Doesn't that so, drastically reduce its power? No, no. Um, it doesn't. It just makes it... I mean, it should, but it just makes it quieter. As uh, tech. Uh, because so, technology. Yeah, because technology. So I'm going to aim and fire, and uh, this would this is probably a fast-moving target, right? Yeah. Say? Okay, so that's minus one. Uh oh. Oh, look. Good job, Skid. I would give you a bottle cap if we did bottle caps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> give him a bonus. Uh, aim, then you get the plus one, so it can't cancel it out, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, and I actually get an additional plus one for my laser sight, so that is in a total of 13. Okay, that is a hit. Um, let me just check the effect on that. That is... Nope, that's still a success. Okay. Um, okay, uh, yeah, give me the damage. All right. Are you are you trying to aim? You're, they're closer now. Do you want? Are you trying to hit one of the ones that's already been hit, or a new one, one? that's already been hit? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Eighteen points of damage. Okay, and you, you basically explode wow. one out of the sky <laughs> with a shotgun blast. <laughs> All right, uh, Swan, you are up. Okay. Um, question. So I mean, Swan was like, "This could be hostile, extremely hostile territory." So she did pack a lot of things. I, I'm not really sure how much they can carry as far as mags. Are we going to worry about that uh, encumbrance type thing at all, or no? I would In not right now. I think you have enough right. to get get through this uh, just, this combat. Let's just say, okay, for discussion's sake, she does have like a hundred mags on her. But anyway, she takes the suppressor off her gun. She's like, you know what? These are going to be warning shots. You know, the science, sound, forget it. Can I use a like flechette ammunition in, in a Gauss or no? Or does it can only be in like certain rifles? Uh, I, no, it, a Gauss rifle wouldn't fire a flechette. Yeah. It would, it's gonna fire. They can? Us. No, I would say no. But you, I'll let you take the take the silencer off for um, with a minor action. Yeah, I'll take, yeah, she wants, she, cause these, you know, birds don't like, yeah, sound, they'll scatter, she wants them to scatter. That's what I thought, but apparently <laughs> not. <laughs> They're oh hungry. really? No, I thought you used your suppressor, no. Oh, my suppressor is on technically, but I thought at least yeah. an exploding bird would scare oh. them, but. That, yeah, you know. Yeah, we it, thought that might work, but okay, it's so a round two. She's gonna try to do that like with her sparrow. <laughs> they're big. <laughs> they're big birds, right? Yeah, they're like yeah, huge, like huge, like golden eagle size. Like, yeah, so like a big like exploding faces. bird would be scary. Would it, would it sound like a Thanksgiving turkey exploding? <laughs> I honestly have never heard of Thanksgiving turkey explode, so I can't confirm or deny. You never tried to microwave a whole Thanksgiving <laughs> turkey? I haven't, but now I want to know more about <laughs> the time that you did. Yeah, it's not doesn't sound <laughs> appetizing. <laughs> By the way, remember to add your effect. Well, I didn't do this. Remember to add your effects, like the number above the target that you get. You can add that to your total damage. To my damage. Yeah. That's a big yes. hit. That's a big hit. You're right. Okay. So I'm going to use the same rifle, so I have the pluses and stuff like that, right? So hit. And you're, it's an average check to hit. At, so anything above an eight, just give me what, tell me what the effect is. It's just an eight. Okay, so you hit, but with no additional damage. So that's it. All my damage now? Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Oh, wait. Are you aiming at the one, a new one or the one you were shooting at before? The one I was shooting at before because that's the one she has her eye on. Like, think of if, you, if, you're, if you're thinking about yourself in combat, in real time, if you hit something, you're gonna try to hit it again. So that's yeah. what I'm thinking, you know? You're not gonna go, totally. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> So that's how I play video game shooters. I'm kind of like, la, 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 Whoa. 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 <laughs> that's it. So that's six, How is this possible? I rolled four days, so it's 10, 14, 17. Don't worry that's about it. It's possible to do 17 you, no. you Probably not, but you blow it out of the sky anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, it is the Valrock's turn. They are now, uh, so they, are, I would say what, the, the three that are remaining finish their swoop uh, and are now, one is uh, in melee with, uh, I'll say one is in melee with Arthur, uh, one's in melee with Willadine, and one is in melee with Pug. Okay. Uh, Captain Fenrazi is gonna try to sh- try to blast, blast the one that's on, uh, that's on Arthur. And hit. Um, nice. Okay. It's 2D for a shotgun, right? Uh, or, 4D. Close my hands. 4D. Okay. Okay. And she will do 10 points of damage. It's still alive. Uh, Bert will try to blast one with the laser carbine. He's going to aim for the one that's on Willa Dean, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, and he'll hit as well. Hmm. Whoa. Wow, he does he does significant damage. Oh my gosh, Bert blasts the one that comes up to you, Willadine. He just he like he levels his carbine and he just blows its head off. Nice. And then Willadine looks over and meets his gaze. He goes over, over a dead turkey. <laughs> Love. You know, fool for leaving <laughs> yourself open. Turkey. Take cover. Take cover, you idiot. This guy is so mean. <laughs> I was gonna say thanks. Just keep shooting. And Denny will, uh, Denny will fire her and miss with with his other pistol. Oh, Denny. Uh, okay, Arthur, it is your turn. I would like to get one with my spear. All right, there you, you go. So you brace twice. I'll give you a plus two to this roll. It's not going to be good. Let's see. Fuck no, it is going to be good. Uh. 13 plus 2, 15. Nice. That is a hit. Uh, yeah, Fuck that a, bird. A palpable hit. Fuck that bird up. How much damage do you do? So it's a plus 5 <laughs> effect. I think so. It's 6 plus 5, 11. Nice. Okay. Uh, you, not, 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 as, not as good as all you people with laser guns. <laughs> Pretty good for a dog with a stick. <laughs> for a dog with a stick, you do pretty good. You spear it through the chest, and it and it slump and it falls like mm, on top of you. It's dead. Nice. You, nice. you know what? I'm gonna eat this later. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right, we'll shove some garlic up its butt, and we are gonna feast. <laughs> oh my God. What every Valrock dreams of hearing in their in their in their infancies. Um, All right, Willadine, you're up. There's one more Valrock. It is currently menacing. Uh, pug. It is the one menacing pug. All right, I am going to aim uh, at the one menacing pug. Oh yeah, that's gonna hit. That is a nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, you hit, plus five okay. effect. Let's see. 12. 12 damage? Yeah. All right, you, you hit it, you do not kill it. Okay. All right. Uh, Pug, there is. You are now in melee with this Valrock. Okay, he's just gonna let his shotgun drop, and he's going to punch it. Yes, <laughs> I was hoping he would. It. <laughs> <laughs> just reach up, snap its neck. <laughs> oh my god! It's like punching Box an cars. eagle in the face. Fox cars. Oh god. Oh, That's sixteen. Sixteen. Nice. Yeah, you hit. <gasps> oh, right, wait, the wait a minute. Uh. Uh, that's 16 points of damage. Oh my god. 
They have oh, six. You, you, you like Ricky owed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, as creatures, they have sixteen hit points. This one had. Or they have sixteen hits. This one had four left. Uh, so please uh, describe your kills. Good. Okay. Uh, as you were so Here. fond of saying, Dad. This is it. Here we go. Oh my oh, God. God. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens. You smash it like with your hands. Yeah, so, yes, just, you, this Ricky you, I just smash it. I just smash my fist like right through its through its skull, and it explodes. I'm covered in bird shards. All right. Yes, yeah, so you are covered in shards of bird. The combat is over. You managed to survive. That was awesome. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Punch it. Like, grab a bird's head and just crush it. <laughs> if if uh, the other crew was scared of us before, they are definitely scared of us <laughs> yeah, now. No. Oh, that yeah. was God, that was so bad. That was some good shooting, ladies. Exactly. And gents. <laughs> and we're going to eat good tonight. Oh yeah, gather those up. Those are good eating. Yeah. You eat these. You eat these. You eat these, says Bert, Bert the engineer. You actually eat yeah. these. Oh yeah, it's Bertram, good eating. Oh yeah. Hey, no. you haven't tried. Do yeah, you haven't tried Arthur's uh wait, wait, what are these called again? For, for... Valrock. Valrock. You haven't tried Arthur's uh Valrock. It's mm -hmm. I it's have to imagine they're incredibly me. stringy. Very gamey. Very gamey. <laughs> you say that like it's it works. Oh, well, it's better than some of the other creatures. Waste not, want not. <laughs> uh, Bert they're looks truly revolted. Denny's like, right, I'll try anything <laughs> once. And uh, round Captain Van Razi is like, we should keep going. We should, make, we should get, get going. We should move on. No, you're right, Captain. I'll just grab this one right here. <laughs> they're, and they're, and yeah. this one right here. <laughs> they're really big. Like they're, It's like... You have I'll to just like, grab one. I'll just grab one. We have a very sophisticated meat salting process back at the camp. We make jerky out of these ones. Real mm -hmm. good. You could chew mm -hmm. it for like six, seven, maybe eight. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. Could be ten. Ten what? You don't yep. know what it's like to survive on a planet like this. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's so you. It's asparagus. <laughs> you gather the remain the the not uh, just like exploded Valrox. And we took the one where Skid exploded just the head because we don't need the head. So the body ah, is in yeah, yeah. Well, far be it to eat the head. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, and you uh, you continue your and making your way up the mountain, uh, and you finally make it up to the top. And you have to again, you have to kind of walk along the river, and there, you kind of have to creep along, you know, scurry up. Um, so I need an average athletics check to do that. This is, this is a lot harder with the Valrock. I was going to say, you might want to, if, instead of you're carrying Denny still, your, yours is going to be a difficult check. But you could you could All also right. take your time and adjust the time frame and go slow. Uh, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll probably, I'll try to go a little slower if we have. Endurance. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, 11. Okay, yep, you're good. El 11 as well. Also good. I guess I better roll for the count. You could use you could use a luck point, at least if it's really bad. Oh, I'll do that, yeah, because I'm uh, oh, Matthew, what were you gonna say? Basically don't I can't Don't waste the luck. Don't wait. no, you can. You're welcome to I was just gonna say don't waste the luck point. I'll I'll fail you. I'll fail forward you. Fail you okay. forward. Yeah, you know what? I you know, and I rolled I rolled too low to use my luck point because I only I rolled snake eyes, so it's like oh, she's oh, trying to carry too many freaking birds. That. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so, You swan, dropped the birds. <laughs> you're trying to carry too many. too many birds and you trip and fall into the river and uh Pug yeah. has to scoop you out. Oh, <laughs> oh no. All right, now I'm wet. Seven. Okay, you, 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 uh, you, you, you also don't have sure footing, Arthur, and even you don't fall or anything, but you have, you're going real slow. Mm. <sighs> well, probably because I'm trying to like, I've got my impaled bird on a stick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're not letting that bird go. You killed that with your own. <laughs> you no. killed it spear. with a spear. <laughs> <laughs> that was badass, Arthur. That was great. <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, you make your way along the river uh, and back finally to that familiar you know, ideal of your your settlement. All the crops, the the w the the windmill made of uh, like blades made out of the, the ship's hull, uh, the, you know, the warbler becoming one with the terrain, the kind of ivy growing over it, trees maybe coming up through parts of it, uh, the leaves of the forest in the distance. And any minute now, like right when the when the when when the harvest is done, that's about when. It's autumn, and the the trees just like mm -hmm. light up with these brilliant colors. It's actually really incredibly beautiful, uh, even though you're marooned on a planet and no one knows you're there. Um, 
Captain Fangrazi says, This is yours. Referring to the, pointing at the, the wreck of the Warbler. And Bert says, Yeah. It's yeah. ugly, ugly, lumbering thing, isn't it? Hideous. <laughs> We're really proud of this, though, what we've been able to do with it. It's, we, kept, we, I, it's kept us alive, and it we survived the crash with it, so it's good for something, I guess. D- and Denny looks up from, from uh, you from his arm, your arms pug, and he says, "You all were on the shit run, weren't you?" Yes, we were. Yes, you're familiar with the shit run. We're, yes, the- were, were you on that as well? Never. I got friends. Huh. Uh, oh, also, I grabbed I grabbed trigger on the way. Oh, okay. All right. Are you riding trigger? <laughs> Yes, I'm slowly riding Trigger, and I watch oh. Bertram as I as I ride Bertram. <laughs> Bertram, they're shooting daggers at each other. <laughs> Far cry from an Imperial Navy starship, isn't it? What this bird? you 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 what you pilot now, of course, Captain. <laughs> Are you making some sort of joke? I, I I didn't think I was being unclear. It's been a long time since I've talked to anybody, and my understanding of sarcastic uh, sentences is hard for me to understand. Um, You're going to far cry it? from a guy who isn't going to get his ass kicked. <laughs> so was that a, wait, was that a joke? Was that a joke? Uh, it's been a long time, Captain. I, <laughs> we all have the same... Anyway, just shut up, okay? You're being a jerk again. I don't understand. Do you, do you like... Uh, Physically menace him in any way, or you? Yeah, just, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like I, I dump his friend down on the ground. I come up to him and just like, "Hey, pal, listen, this is our planet. We don't take that kind of crap here. We haven't even named it yet. Better shut up. <laughs> Stop being a jerk." That's true. And he, 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 he doesn't like this, but he's also quite afraid of your, your, your height and your. He just saw your, him explode a bird's head with your hands. Yeah, he's yeah. uh I'm literally as the strongest a Sofant can be in this universe. Mm. Uh, make a note of that. I can adjust my my monster's uh, hits up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, after he says that, Captain like nods at Pug as a thank you, and then she pulls her like rope rein a little bit so that trigger just like Rah! and like pecks towards <laughs> Bertram, uh, and then she continues riding on ahead. Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, as you approach, you know you don't see anyone out, but you don't, you know, no one rode out to greet you. Um, and you kind of ride up, you know, maybe you ride up ahead, but then you circle back and you ride up ahead and you circle back. And all of you, you know, your pug's carrying Denny. And you get to up, to, up to the warbler and still no one has come to greet you. And you round the wreckage of the ship and you encounter a truly startling sight. There's a tall, thin figure clad in what must have once been gleaming white armor. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's come now on. battered and encased in a layer of dirt. Helmet up, visor down, looking like these two dark, huge, opaque bug eyes. And the figure is holding Plurn in front of in front of him like a shield, like laser huh? pistol trained on her head. And Trey and Krog are tied. Marley are are tied to the erect shard of the Warbler's hull. Their hands oh. bound up, like uh, hooked onto the onto the uh, the kind of spike of metal. And Plurn is growling, just furious. The figure in armor looks up at you, and then the opaque visor on the armor retracts, and you see an olive-complected man in his mid to late twenties, a short, neat goatee and mustache beneath an so aquiline nose and pale blue <laughs> eyes. Oh. And he says, "Hello there. I wondered when you would return. It took you long enough, didn't you? And we'll see you next week." Oh, <laughs> this. Oh, I, I knew it. Time. I knew. Oh. <laughs> I did Go with my not girlfriend. I, <laughs> I told my not girlfriend. Can we just talk about it? <laughs> she never listened. Try to tell her. Oh well.